Wildfires have crossed state lines, burning hundreds of acres all across Virginia. Meantime, in North Carolina, a growing wildfire in Colette Ridge continues to spread, reaching day 15. If you were near a wildfire, what would you know to do? Let's dig into it. Firefighting efforts continue in Patrick County, Virginia, after a wildfire broke out Monday evening. This is the latest fire that has ignited, and the recent dry weather conditions have just added more fuel to the flames. EMS says firefighters are trying to establish containment lines, but right now the fire is 10% contained. The fire has spread over 500 acres and is expected to grow over the next few days. In North Carolina, a wildfire has scorched more than 2,900 acres in Cherokee County. Today marks day 15 of the fire that originally started in Collette Ridge over two weeks ago. The U.S. Forest Service says the fire still has not been contained, and at this time, the Forest Service says that it has not threatened any buildings or hurt anyone. A crew with more than 100 people are currently working to create containment lines to slow that fire spread. Now, fire crews have been able to contain some of the fires out near the Asheville area. Firefighters say an afternoon fire in West Asheville started with a fast moving brush fire. Crews facilitated several evacuations across the city amid those containment efforts. Now, after hours went by, fire crews were able to contain the fire but not extinguish it. At one instance, the fire was about 15 feet from a house before crews literally jumped over a fence to put it out. Planes were also used to drop water into the area to contain those flames. And again, thankfully, no one has been hurt in these fires either in the Asheville area. In the meantime, just south of Asheville, intense flames continue to spread in Henderson County. The flames have burned two homes and a couple of other structures. We have a report from Hendersonville where city leaders have declared a state of emergency in order to get some help. For the first time in seven years, a massive brush fire is sweeping across parts of Henderson County. We've had about 20 different departments arrive outside of our local surrounding counties. Um, we are having more that's on their way in right now. There are no injuries, but the North Carolina Forest Service says two homes have been destroyed and one has been badly damaged. But Henderson County officials say they're thankful it's not the other way around. You know, it's sad that we've seen some loss of some structures, but thank goodness no loss of life, no injuries, anything like that. So you can rebuild a house, you know, so but uh, you can't rebuild a life. So thank goodness we've been lucky there. Because it's all hands on deck, an investigation into the cause has not been completed yet, but crews on scene today tell us homeowners on Poplar Drive were burning about a week prior to the start of the brush fire, and because it's dry, some of the remains from that fire could have ignited and spread. And since then, it's turned into something many of the newer firefighters have never seen before. When it's burning 12 inches deep, a lot of them haven't faced fires like that until now because it's not something you deal with all the time. A state of emergency has been issued for the county, and as the fire continues, that's what they say will help them with resources moving forward. You know, we want to have every resources we can get available to help fight this thing. And by declaring a state of emergency, it opens up so many channels, again, to state and federal help if we need it. The price gouging law is in effect. Once state leaders declared a state of emergency in Henderson County, the provision began. This helps protect consumers from businesses trying to charge extra for essential items like gas or water. Authorities urge consumers to file a complaint with the state attorney general's office if they think a business is in fact price gouging. Right now, much of North Carolina is under a drought advisory. The U.S. Drought Monitor of North Carolina classifies some of the western parts of the state as being in severe drought, which explains, of course, much of the action that we're seeing. Our own Tim Buckley is going to explain the drought advisory and how this has come to be. Yeah, Tanya, it all happened in October when we got barely any rain, and that's kind of where we are where we are. Right now, all of our counties are in a moderate drought, but as you said, severe drought is happening out west where they've had more of those wildfires. Bottom line, our area, we just need to kind of be extra cautious. In a moderate drought, it really just starts to increase the fire danger, and you can start to have water problems. Once you get into that severe drought category, that's really when water problems can start to happen. Water levels get lower, and they might start to encourage conservation of water. Those are things we'll keep an eye on until the weather pattern changes, hopefully sometime in the next month. 
All right, so along with that, the U.S. Drought Monitor of North Carolina has some recommendations suggesting minimal use of unnecessary water and to avoid wasting water with all of these dry conditions. Growing concerns of wildfires and drought have forced leaders to issue burn bans across the state as well. The NC Forest Service has placed a ban on all open burning and canceled all burning permits. The dry conditions have led to an increase, of course, in those fire risks triggering this response. The ban impacts 14 counties, including Cherokee, Henderson, Jackson and Transylvania, where fires are either still active or have been recently contained. Code orange, code red alerts, they have also been issued for Western North Carolina. The code red categorizes the air as unhealthy. Code orange categorizes the air as unhealthy for those sensitive groups. The North Carolina Air Quality Forecast Center says the fine particles from the wildfire smoke is really to blame for this. Air concerns began to arise over the weekend as more wildfires began to break out. The center says these alerts are effective today and will remain for tomorrow as well. Well, with all these talks about dry conditions in our state, fire risks not are, are not far fetched. It can happen to any of us and you need to know what to do in the event of a wildfire. The North Carolina Forest Service says if you are ever in this situation, uh, you should be wearing long pants, a long shirt to protect your body as you're trying to get away from the wildfire. Stay inside your house if you can, away from walls if you cannot evacuate. Close all doors and keep groups of people together, not spread out. If you do have to evacuate, use a pre-planned route. Keep a flashlight, cell phone, or radio with you at all times. Of course, we're going to continue to follow these wildfires. We also want you to head to WFMYNews2.com because new information will be there. Uh, WFMYNews2 at 6 starts now.